What is diplomacy and how does it work? In 2022, there are just over 200 nations on the planet. The United States is one of those nations, and like other nations of the world, the United States seeks to safeguard and protect their own interests. This is why U.S. diplomats meet with their counterparts around the world to reach agreement on issues of mutual concern. How easy or how difficult this process is often comes down to the kind of relationships diplomats develop with each other. Let's define diplomacy. Diplomacy is the art and practice of building and maintaining these relationships through tact and mutual respect. Let's understand this with a hypothetical example. It is the year 2032, and there's a global shortage of maple syrup. Canada is the world leader in maple syrup production, accounting for 83% of maple syrup consumption in the United States. As a result, prices of syrup in the United States have skyrocketed, and the American public is unhappy with the rising costs of their favorite breakfast condiment. Local U.S. production just cannot cope with the demand. Something has to be done. To address this issue, the State Department gets tasked by the President to renegotiate the terms of Canada's sale of maple syrup to the United States. <laughs> Diplomats at the State Department first conduct a complete analysis of the current situation by answering some basic questions. What is the scale of the syrup shortage? What does the current agreement with Canada look like? Is there any flexibility within the agreement? Is there any leverage that the U.S. has over Canada that might be used to motivate or incentivize a renegotiation? Diplomats will also seek to make themselves aware of any ongoing negotiations between Canada and other countries on the issue. They will understand the domestic complexities of maple production in Canada. What are some pressures that the Canadians are facing? And how can the U.S. leadership guide the path to a solution? The U.S. diplomats will also reach out to their Canadian counterparts to communicate the intent for dialogue and to set the stage for talks between the two countries. They listen to and take note of any responses from the Canadians. Within their own team, the diplomats make sure that they are all on the same page about the projected path for talks. Diplomats on both sides begin to work out logistical details of the negotiations. Venues, dates, participants, and agenda are finalized. The State Department collaborates with other U.S. federal agencies who are going to take part in the negotiations, such as the Department of Commerce. As the meetings begin in Canada, the head of the U.S. delegation, the State Department's Undersecretary for Economic Growth, holds a meeting with her Canadian counterpart to set the tone for the negotiations. Various groups of both delegations then begin to talk through different aspects of the trade relationship, while constantly consulting with their leadership to ensure that their goals are being met. The conversations can get tense, but the diplomats keep their composure. Throughout the interactions they have, the U.S. diplomats remember that their mission in Canada is to advocate for the interests of the United States. In this case, their goal is for Canada to lower the price of maple syrup being sold to the United States. Diplomats innovate by creating opportunities that appeal to each country. These ideas form the basis of a new treaty. As the terms of this treaty are drafted, legal experts from both sides verify that the new terms are in compliance with other relevant policies and international law. They also ensure both parties can manage and operate within the terms outlined. 
the negotiations conclude with the signing of a treaty and a warm handshake and a ceremonial exchange of gifts to symbolize the genial spirit in which the negotiations have been conducted. Ideally, both delegations can now report back to their leadership and the people they represent with a message of success in securing national interests. Looking back, we can clearly see that there are some fundamental skills that diplomats use to achieve their goals. These are analysis, awareness, communication, collaboration, leadership, composure, advocacy, innovation, management. It is important to remember that diplomacy and its skills are not limited to trade agreements or drafting treaties. From nuclear energy to refugee crises, from exchange programs to state visits, the skills of diplomacy are used in multiple ways, every day, at every level of interaction. They are what ensure the smooth conduct of international relations and help safeguard national interests. <laughs>